Have you used the Excel 365 checkmark, uh, checkbox feature yet? It is new in Excel 365. In addition, have you used, this has been around a long time, have, do you use the data validation feature for drop-down lists? If you haven't done either, this is the video for you, so let's get started. And we'll start with the check uh, box feature first, but I am Donna Gilliland, and I am teaching a Designing Excel Spreadsheets webinar in March. And this is one portion of what will be covered. So I wanted to create this video for all of you who are not attending. And uh, you can at least leave this with some knowledge on how to use these two features. My uh, company is Moss Training. And the company is 20 years old now. And my name is Donna Gilliland. Let's get started with what you came here for. Let's start with the checkbox. This is the beginnings of a tracking spreadsheet for a fictitious golf tournament vendor list. And it is far from complete. This is just a draft version of it. One of the fields is the booth confirmed. So rather than doing a yes, no drop down list, you can do a check mark box. Then I will and shortly I'll give you the reasoning behind why you would want to do that over a yes, no. Let's start with payment received. The first step is to select the range that you want to put in the check uh, box in. From there, click the insert tab for the insert ribbon and you'll see a controls option. And there's just one option in that controls uh, tools area, choose checkbox and it's done. Whenever you click to mark an item as complete, it actually records Excel in the back end, either a yes, or true value. We won't go into why you need that or need to know that. Just know that that is what's happening and that, that information will come in a later video. But right now they're ready to use by just clicking to check mark that something is uh, completed. Then over on the right hand side, I have a vendor type. I've already done the vendor list, but this is data validation. That feature has been around a long time and here's how it works. In order to have an, uh, a drop down list of options for a field, the first step is to select the area that you need to data validate. This already has information in it, but yours would be blank and you're selecting what you want, or it, it might not be blank. It may be that it's already been manually entered, but you are keying in more records and more records and you want to stop that manual entry then you can go back and select the fields that already have it and then create your data validated list. But the first step is identify the field range by selecting it, and we have. From there, this feature is on the data ribbon. Clicking the data tab, the ribbon opens up and over to the far right, you will see a group of tools that says data tools one of those options is data validation. And we're going to choose, I, I click the down arrow and chose data validation, and up comes a box. And of course, in the training, you would learn what all these options are for settings, input message, error alert. But your focus right now is just, how do I create a drop down list? It's already on the tab settings, that's the default. And the allow is set to any value, mine's own list because I previously created this list and then and I'm still in session with Excel, so it's remembering what I did last. But in your case, it would say any value. I'll just set it back to what it was. From any value from the drop-down arrow, we want a list. After you click list, this source area here will be empty. I've already typed all of my in. So in the source area, you need to type your list in the order that you want it to appear when the drop down list is engaged. You can't have any spaces. Uh, apparel is the first one and then a comma. Beverage, a comma. So I'm separating it with a comma. The, the aggravation to this is that if you have a large list, you're going to have to alphabetically type it in yourself because there's no option in here 
for sorting. And that's where you need range names. You'll create a formula that would pull this list from somewhere else. That will be taught in the class. But for right now, just a simple drop-down list that you need. This, uh, this isn't that many names, but you will have to do your own alphabetizing by typing it in in an alphabetic way. And then again, remembering that it has to be separated with a comma. After you click on OK, then you will have a drop-down arrow. See, no matter which cell I go to, within that previously selected area, there is a drop-down list for me to choose what I want. I'm going to choose um, marketing here for this one. I'm going to go back and change it. Now, here is the uh, drawback so far to your design is that right now the design of your spreadsheet does not take into account the growing of this data where you would key in more and more records. But when I come down here, and that's what the webinar is going to take care of for you, but when you come down to the next record and I type in uh, a new vendor, and I make up one, there may be a Taco Tuesday out there, I don't know, but that's what I'm putting in. And I tab over, look, it doesn't bring down the next, it doesn't inherit the settings of the prior cells, nor does it inherit my drop-down list here. And that's where tables come into play. But as far as this video is concerned, for those of you that are not attending this webinar, whether in March or in the future, this video is to educate you to the the checkmark box, which is on the insert ribbon. It's your checkbox. So that's what the purpose of this video is. I'll educate you to how to include it and to educate you on the basics of getting a basic data validated list. Now let's go uh, as I close out. I want to go over some reasoning behind why you would want to use the checkmark uh, field. When is it, that it would be the best design. And so I've written some things here for you. First of all, I've, I've written here that it provides a quick visual way for you to track important statuses like payments, contracts, check-ins. So that's a, another reason for use or reasons why you would use the checkmark field. It does speed up data entry by instead of typing the word yes or no or having inconsistent case of yes and no, and certainly you could do a data validated field for yes or no, but in this case, if that's all that you're trying to uh, put in, it's marked whether it's been done or not, then the check box field would be quicker. And then I, in case you're wondering, well, how would that be valuable to me in filtering? Uh, it's with check mark fields, it stores the value as true or false. And in the more detailed training, you'll learn why that's important for you to know and how you would use that. And then I've written for you, when should you not use a check mark? If the field requires more than two states, for example, pending, approved, denied, then you would want to think about using the data validated drop-down list instead. So if tracking something more complex, like payment amounts or methods, uh, things of that nature, then in this, that one, the text number field would be better. I just want you to get to thinking about when to use it, when it's maybe not best to use it. So with that said, I hope you found this quick video on what the checkbox does, when it's best to use it, and how you put it in, and then a brief overview of the data validated list. So that's it for now, and I encourage you to uh, go to my website and sign up for my newsletter. It's called, it's called uh, Sign Up to Keep Up. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I would appreciate hearing from you. And if you are not a current subscriber in my, on my YouTube channel, I encourage you to subscribe. Thank you for watching.